Thanks for clicking on the video. My name is Tom Altsop and today I'm going to be talking about the forehand kinetic chain. Now I've made a lot of videos on this subject. At the end of this video, there'll be a playlist where you can go through it and kind of watch some of the demonstrations and explanations on the forehand kinetic chain. But this video is going to be talking about the reasons, the skills that are preventing you from executing those movements. So the first skill is being able to get the ball in the right place. Once that contact point's out in front at what I like to call a 45 degree angle, some people will be further away, some people a little bit closer, but roughly if you get that ball at a 45 degree angle, your hand's gonna be behind the racket, you're gonna be stable, and when it's in the right place, your swing is gonna be smoother. Obviously, if you're too close, you're too jammed, late, too far away, you're gonna to have to manipulate your body, your arm and the racket to control the tennis ball, right? Pretty obvious. So it's important to understand that your sending skills, how you hit the ball and send it back over the net, can't be any better than your receiving skills, your anticipation of the incoming ball. We need to know where that ball is going to be and when so that we can time our swing. And the better our timing is, the more sophisticated and advanced our sending skills can be. There's obviously a lot of people who are kind of new to the game or just not that advanced that when the ball's coming, they're not quite sure where it's going to be and the, the swing is going to be a little bit choppy. An advanced player dealing with a, a simple shot or like a, you know, an easy, uh, slow paced ball is going to be able to wind up ahead of time, turn their hips, their shoulders and just let that racket go. Obviously, no matter what the level is, you're going to struggle with your receiving skills to some point. If, if, uh, if I'm to play with a lot of amateur players, my technique looks good because I know where the ball's going to be. If Alcaraz starts whacking the ball at me, I'm going to be like, oh my God, where's this ball going to be? And then I'm going to tighten up and my technique's going to look rubbish. Now I'm going to explain how you can develop both your receiving skills and sending skills, or as you may like to call it, anticipation and technique. You can develop these skills in a way where they both help each other, they feed off each other, and ultimately you just become a better tennis player. But you have to develop them sort of in harmony. Let me explain. If you are practicing tennis in a closed situation where someone's hand feeding you a ball, or you're on a ball machine, it's feeding you easy shots, there could be some value in that. But what tends to happen is people start developing more elaborate sending skills because the receiving skills are easy. So in this situation, your sending skills can be better than your receiving skills need to be because the ball's just getting tossed to you. So you can start developing more advanced sending skills, which can be useful to a point, but what tends to happen is people are like, yeah, let's do the uh, next gen forehand. I've heard that's uh, really in right now. So let's start doing the next gen forehand, start trying to hit it like Alcaraz. You start working on this technique, thinking that's, that's the secret, that's the answer to all your problems. Then when we start rallying, it's even harder to time the ball. And then we're in this mess where now your technique's actually breaking down because you can't time the, this, this coordination. So what we need to do is develop simple, coordinated moves where everything's flowing together, you're feeling smooth and rhythmic, and we can get into a rally. Then when we can get into this, this, these rallies where we get better opponents or you can just start getting into a higher quality rally where the ball gets hit back and forth fast with spin and depth, then you start building up your anticipation, your receiving skills. You start to understand where that ball's gonna be. Once you start to understand where the ball's gonna be, now we can start winding it up and letting it go and start developing better technique. And they feed off each other. So there's a couple of exercises that can really help you with your anticipation. And it starts by understanding what's going on the other side of the court. See if you can call out loud or maybe just do it in your head, what position your opponent is in. Are they in a defensive position, maybe a neutral position or an aggressive position? See if you can pick up these signs because it's gonna allow you to anticipate what's gonna happen next. You can also call out whether they've hit a topspin, a flat or a slice shot. That's going to help you to understand how that ball is going to bounce and obviously where it's going to be to allow you to time your shot. But my favorite one, because it works with every level, 
is to call out whether the ball is going to land short, middle of the court, or deep. And the earlier you can anticipate that, the quicker you can get into position, and again, the more advanced and sophisticated uh, swing you can do when you can start really you know accelerating if you don't see these shots early enough you're just going to be reacting at the last second your timing and your coordination are going to suffer so the next thing i want to talk about is decision making now i said that technique is timing and coordination but it's also governed by decision making because the shot you go for is going to dictate the technique that you use and you can't have the appropriate technique if you've tried an inappropriate shot and this often happens especially in practice people just want to just go for everything and yeah obviously your technique's going to break down and it's important that you practice the right shot at the right time so if you're way behind the baseline you're trying to drive it yeah your technique's going to break down it's going to be all over the place not only are you going to be sort of off balance and out of sync and the coordination is going to be a bit off if you're going for the wrong shot, but it's also important to understand that your technique is governed by the situation. So, for example, if I throw a ball over the net, I got someone who wants to catch it at the baseline there. This is, that's my technique. If I have someone on the service line that I want to throw to, I'm not going to use the same technique and go slow. That would be uh, ridiculous. All right, I'm going to use this technique. But that technique is not great to get the ball over the net, but it is great if I want to execute this throw right here. So you need the right technique for the situation and you have to respect that. Thanks for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you got something out of it. And I know there's someone who you know, who you hit with that could benefit from this video. Make sure you share it with them. Comment, like, and subscribe. Talk to you soon.